Hi, and welcome to Avocet Math. In this video and in a few examples, we'll look at problems involving numbers in the complex plane. So let's take a look at our example problem from a recent AMC 12. Let z be the number 1 plus i divided by root 2. What is the product of these two series? Ooh, that looks like a lot of terms. Too many to expand, so let's pause to review a few tips on complex numbers. So first tip is to be very familiar with the Euler and Damov theorems and understand them both in the framework of imaginary exponents of E. So starting with Euler, we can get to the exponent form of Damov by raising to the nth power and then using the product rule for nested exponents to bring the n inside the exponent with theta and effectively drop the n inside the arguments of both the sine and the cosine. So you want to test your understanding of this expression by deriving most any trig identity in under 30 seconds. For example, you can get to the double angle formula by starting with e to the i theta and squaring it and expanding it in a usual form. But we can also do this in expansion in a slightly different way by using the product rule for nested exponents to bring the two down through the parentheses and group it with the theta and using this as the argument in the Euler formula to write this as cosine two theta i sine two theta. And when we compare the real and the imaginary parts of this expression, we quickly get to the double angle formula for both sine and cosine. And if we divide these results, we can quickly get to the double angle formula for tan two theta. So as an exercise, see if you can start with the expression e to the i a, e to the i b, this product, and see if you can use the same logic to derive the sum angle formulas for both sine and cosine. Next tip is you want to have a graphical picture in your mind for the most common algebra terms, especially powers and reciprocal. So for example, if we start with a complex number z on the unit circle in the complex plane at some angle theta, you want to be able to visualize quickly what z squared looks like and z cubed. And just sort of picture them as stepping along the unit circle in the counterclockwise direction in steps of theta. And if we started with a number below the real axis, say w at some angle phi, you would form the square of w by just stepping in the clockwise direction along the unit circle. If we perhaps started with a number z just outside the unit circle, then the powers of z would still be stepped in the same units of theta, but now the powers of z would spiral outward as we go from z squared to z cubed. Now it's also helpful to understand graphically how the reciprocal maps numbers in the complex plane. So here again, let's start with uh, some numbers z, and we'll pick a number on the unit circle, just outside the unit circle, and just inside the unit circle at some angle theta. And when we perform this mapping from z to the uh, reciprocal of z, we'll find that the numbers map below the real axis at the same angle theta, and that if we're on the unit circle, the number will map to on the unit circle for one over z. So this operation looks very much like the complex conjugate. And if the number z is just outside the unit circle, it'll map to inside the circle. And inside the circle will map to outside the circle. So this is a very handy picture to have in your mind for how reciprocals work. So as an exercise, see if you can use this graphical picture to understand the expression one over z complex conjugate inverted complex conjugate and see if you can understand what that is using this graphical uh, construction. And final tip is you want to be able to quickly construct and picture roots of unity. 
So if, for example, we're trying to find the thirds roots of one, you want to be able to construct the principal root at plus one and find the two remaining roots by equally spacing them in theta. And if, for example, we're trying to find the fourth root of i, i is 1 at 90 degrees, so we can use Demov's theorem to find the principal root at magnitude 1 and 22.5 degrees, and construct the three remaining roots in the same fashion by spacing them equally in theta. In this case, they're all right angles. And if, for example, we were trying to find the fourth root of 2i, that would look very similar because the thetas would be the same, but all the points would be pushed out by a factor of the fourth root of 2. So those are my tips. So now let's take a look back at our example problem. Now in our problem, we're dealing with a series of z powers and a series of reciprocal z powers all multiplied together. And when we plot z on the complex plane, we find it on the unit circle at 45 degrees. So any power of z will also be on the unit circle in some increment of 45 degrees. So for example, z squared, z cubed, etc. And more importantly, the reciprocal powers of z will also be on the unit circle and will map to the complex conjugates of their associated powers of z. So 1 over z will appear here, 1 over z squared will appear here, 1 over z cubed will appear here. And why that's important is that when we form this sum of powers of z, we're going to construct some complex number that's going to have a magnitude and some angle, call it phi. And when we construct that same sum of the reciprocal powers, we're going to construct something that has the same magnitude, but now the opposite value of phi, such that when we multiply these two together, the phi's will cancel, and we're just going to be left with magnitude squared. And that simplifies this problem enormously because we don't even need to consider the series of reciprocal powers. We just need to figure out what's the magnitude of the power series of z on the left. So let's examine that a little more carefully. Now when we look at these powers in our complex plane, we notice that all the powers of z will basically march counterclockwise in units of 45 degrees so we can use a shorthand notation and just note the power coefficient for the z. So this is z to the first, this is z to the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and at eight, we'll complete the unit circle and start repeating values along our unit circle. And so on. So essentially where we end up on this constellation has everything to do with what the power is in mod 8. And that's a critical observation. So we really need to examine what these powers are in modulus 8. So let's write them down. We have 1, 4, 9, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, Take these numbers, divide them by 8, keep the remainder. 1, 4, 0, 1, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 1, 0. So we have a pattern here that's uh, pretty common when we examine powers in any modulus. And we notice something pretty striking. We have only three possible moduli when we consider the powers in this series. The three possible places that we could end up are modulus 1, modulus 4, or modulus value 0. And what's important there is that anytime we have the complex number pointing in the 0 position added to a complex number pointing in the 4 position, 
those two are going to cancel out. So we notice we have some very convenient cancellations here and that these numbers will cancel in the sum. And what we'll be left with are six complex numbers all pointing in the same direction. And when we sum that, the magnitudes will just add for a grand magnitude of six such that the magnitude squared is 36 for choice C. Anyway, I hope that all helped, and I'll see you with the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.